Good morning. How are you today? I hope that you are doing well. My morning hasn't started off too badly. I'm going to try something a little different today and see if I can get my calculator emulator to work along with the uh, Word document here while I'm writing. So we'll see how well this goes. Hopefully you have your guided student notes printed out and we are ready to begin. Today's lesson is on exponents and roots. The job of an exponent is to indicate repeated multiplication. This is not just any old multiplication. We want repeated multiplication of the same factor. And you remember that factors are things, of course, that are being multiplied. So when you see the expression 3 to the sixth power, what that means is that we are multiplying the factor 3 six times. 3 times 3 times 3 Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times 3. So here we have 6 factors of 3. On your calculator, if we wanted 3 to the 6th power, we would need a 3. And then we would have this exponent key, this little caret, to push the exponent up into position. And the 6 is written as a superscript and then we press enter, and we see that the value is 729. This is read as 3 to the 6th power. And each part of this expression has a name. So the base is a 3. That's the thing that tells you what the factor is. The exponent is the power, which was 6. The exponent tells us how many factors of the base are used in the product. Some exponents are more common than others. Exponents of 2 and 3 are common enough that we speak about them a little bit differently. If the exponent is 2, then we say squared. So 5 to the second power is read as 5 squared. 5 to the second power, that has a value of 25, because 5 times 5 is equal to 25. If you wanted to do this on your calculator, we actually have a squaring button. That's how often it gets used. It gets its own button. So we say 5, and then we hit the x squared key to put a square in the exponent and press enter for equals. If the exponent is 3, then we say cubed. So 2 to the third power is also read as 2 cubed. 2 cubed has a value of 8. We can do this on the calculator. 2. For other exponents, we use this caret button. So it pushes the next number up into the superscript or the exponent position, and 2 cubed is equal to 8. But we know exactly why this works, because 2 cubed just means 2 times 2, which is 4, times another 2, which is 8. So we have three factors of 2. Units can also have exponents. We have feet squared. Sometimes we call these square feet. So we talk about area in terms of square feet. If you were multiplying 9 feet times 3 feet, you would say 9 times 3 is 27, and then feet times feet would give you square feet or feet squared. This M stands for meters, so this is meters cubed. Or we could say cubic meters. That's a type of volume. If we were multiplying 5 meters times 2 meters times 4 meters, 5 times 2 is 10, times 4 is 40, and then meters times meters times meters gives us meters cubed. 
All right, let's head on to our next page. Okay, so on your calculator, general exponents, we use the caret key. It pushes that exponent up into the superscript position. We've done this once, but it's right here to the left of the 7, a little bit above. The x squared key is used to square a value, and that's this one over here. So we type in the base, press the x squared key, the exponent will automatically be 2. So your job is to evaluate these exponents. Pause the video, try it on your calculator, see what you get, and then come back. Okay, how did it work out for you? Let's check. 2 to the 5th power, the calculator should have told you that the answer is 32. 10 to the 6th power, now well, let's try this. 10 raised to the, so push the caret key, 6th power is, there we go, we kind of have to count all those zeros, don't we? Uh, it turns out that the answer is 1 million. And it is no coincidence that it's a 1 followed by 6 zeros. 5 inches whole thing cubed, that would be 5 inches times 5 inches times another 5 inches. So we would need 5 times 5 times 5, that's 5 raised to the third power on our calculator. 125 and inches times inches times inches give us cubic inches. Okay, what we did before we saw a particular power of 10. A power of 10 is an exponential expression with 10 as the base. So over here when we calculated 10 to the sixth power we ended up with a power of 10. 10 to the 6th power is another name for 1 million. Use your calculator, pause the recording, and find some values for these powers of 10. Write the answer in digits, and then also give some words to this. Come back when you're ready. Let's see what we have. 10 squared should be 100. Ten to the third power should be one thousand. Ten to the ninth power. Oh wow, that's long. Might have to count some commas, uh, for some periods there. Put in the commas. It's almost too big for the calculator to display, but not quite. Ten to the ninth power, one billion. Let's see what would happen if we did ten to the twelfth power on your calculator. So ten raised to the twelfth power. If we were watching what we did before, we're expecting a one followed by twelve zeros. Ah, and those twelve zeros make the answer so long that the calculator won't even show them to you. So we kind of need to know what sort of answer to expect. What you might notice is that the names for these powers of 10, we've seen them all before. These are the place value names. Let me scroll up a little bit here. Every place value is a power of 10. So we just did 100, and we saw that that was 10 squared. We did 1,000, we saw that that was 10 cubed. We did 1 million, we saw that was 10 to the 6th. We did a billion, we saw that that was 10 to the 9th. And all of these other place values are, can be expressed as powers of 10 also. What do you suppose 10,000 is? Well, if we use some pattern recognition here, right, the powers are all increasing by 1. And that trend continues. 100,000 is 10 to the fifth power. 10 million 
is 10 to the seventh power. 100 million is 10 to the eighth power. And I'm sure you could continue this on to the left. What about 10? What power of 10 is 10? Let's use our calculator. 10 raised to the, maybe you think it's the first power. And it is. It's exactly what we would expect. One factor of 10. Well, that just gives us 10. 10 times nothing else. It's just a 10. 10 to the first power. What about 1? Our pattern would say that this is 10 to the 0 power. That seems a little odd, so we should check it on the calculator. 10 raised to the 0 power is 1. So the math is nice and consistent here. The nice thing that powers of 10 do for us is it gives us a way to write large numbers without having to write down all of the zeros. Right? 12,000, if you're counting in thousands, everybody knows that it's thousands. So really we just have the 12 and then sometimes people will write thousands on the side of a graph or something like that. Um, this is 12 times a thousand. And so the other way to write 12,000 is 12 times, and then we use a power of 10. The power of 10 that goes with thousands is 10 to the third power. Pause the recording, try the next two on your own, see what you get. All right, let's check. 1,500, that would be 15 times 100. As a power of 10, 100 is 10 squared. So we would have 15 times 10 squared. 2.3 trillion. 2.3 times a trillion. That is uh, 1 followed by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 zeros. Yeah, I didn't enjoy writing that either. It's a whole lot nicer if we just say 2.3 times 10 to the 12th, and we know that 10 to the 12th represents trillions. It saves us from having to write all those zeros, and it saves other people from miscounting all of those zeros. Okay, on to the next page. Decimal place value names also use a power of 10, but their power of 10 is in the denominator. We already know these names. This is 1 tenth. So we could write 1 over 10 to the first. 0 0.01 is 1 one hundredth. That's exactly the same as 1 over 10 squared. 0 0.001, that is 1 one thousandth. Exactly the same as 1 over 10 to the third power. You should be able to finish up the rest of these just as quickly as I can. Pause the recording, give it a shot, and then come back. How did you do? 1 ten thousandth should be 1 over 10 to the 4th power. 1 one hundred thousandth should be 1 over 10 to the 5th power. And 1 one millionth should be 1 over 10 to the 6th power. Okay, let's move on and talk about roots. Roots are used to undo exponents just as subtraction undoes addition, division undoes multiplication, roots undo what the exponent did. So if a number has been squared, then we would use a square root to get back to the original number. If a number has been cubed, then we use a cube root to get back to the original number. If a number has been raised to the fifth power, then we would use a fifth root to find our original number. Roots are written with a radical symbol and an index. A radical symbol looks like this. You might recognize this as a square root symbol, but it's the same one that's used for other types of roots as well. If we were talking about a fifth root, then we would put a little 5 right there in the crook. And this is called the index. The index tells us what type of root we are taking. So we need the fifth root of 32. 
the fifth root of 32, well, I'll tell you, it's equal to 2. And the reason why, remember that the job of a root is to undo what the power did. So if I raised 2 to the fifth power, I would have gotten 32. If I take the fifth root of 32, I get back to 2. Square roots are common enough that we leave the index off. Everybody just knows that if you don't see it, we're talking about a square root. So the square root of 81 is 9, because you know that 9 squared is equal to 81. Let's try a few in our heads without using our calculator. So let's see, the square root of 25, square root. I'm looking for something times itself that gives us 25. Yes, the answer is 5, because 5 squared is equal to 25. All right, what about the fourth root of 81? Gosh, I don't know. Um, I know about a square root of 81. The square root of 81 is 9. 9 times 9 is 81. 9 breaks down into 3 times 3. So 3 times 3 would give me 9, times another 3 times 3 would give me 81. That's 4 factors of 3. This one has an answer of 3, because 3 to the 4th power is equal to 81. All right, what about the 6th root of a million? Well, we've seen a million before. 1 million is 10 to the 6th power. So a 6th root will undo the 6th power, and we will get back to 10. All right, 10 to the 6th power is a million. The cube root of 8 cubic feet. So now we need to take the cube root of everything on the inside. The cube root of 8, something times itself, times itself again, gives me 8. That would be 2. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. The cube root of feet cubed, that's nice and easy. It's just feet, because the cube root undoes the cubing. Right? 2 feet times 2 feet times another 2 feet is equal to 8 cubic feet. So this 2 feet cubed gave us 8 cubic feet, and the cube root undoes the cubing. All right, let's try some with the calculator. So on our calculator, roots have a couple of different keys, but each time they're written on the calculator in yellow. So the first one we might use here is the square root right above the x squared button, and the other roots are here where the index is identified with this little x. So we have to first use the second key. The second key is way up here on the top left portion of your calculator. We'll see it over here. All right, let's try. Uh, some strange roots first. Let's try perhaps the cube root of 8. We already did that one, so at least we know the answer there. The cube root of 8. So the very first thing we need is the index. The index is a 3. And then we need the general root symbol, which is right here above the caret. So we access it with the second key, and then press the button right below it. And you'll see now that the 3 moves up into that index position, we put in the 8 underneath the radical. Press the Enter key, and we find out that the answer is 2. So after pressing this second key, our job is to press the button that looks like this. And that gives us the general radical. And that is right here. All right, square roots have their own key just like squaring had its own key and they're right next to each other. Again we have to start by pressing the second key and then we need this one which is right there. So we'll use the key right below it. 
For example, if we wanted the square root of 25, we would create the radical first, square root, and then type the 25 inside the square root where it belongs, press enter, and see that the answer is 5. All right, so your job is to practice this. Use your calculator, see what you can do, and then come back to our video. The directions tell us to round to the nearest hundredth if necessary, because of course not every square root or other type of root comes out to be a nice whole number. The square root of 673, square root 673, ah, okay, so the calculator gives us the same thing back. That wasn't very helpful. We'll come up here above the enter key, use the toggle button to go back and forth between the decimal approximation and the exact answer. And we see that we would like to have uh, 25, let's see, approximately 25.9. And then we need to decide, should this 4 stay a 4 or should it bump up with the rounding? Look to the right, we see the 2, the 4 will stay a 4 and the square root of 673 is about 25.94. What about the square root of pi? Second, square root, and now we need pi. And pi is up here, the fourth button down on the left-hand side. Just press pi. And there we have 1.77, and the third digit is a 2, so the 77 will stay. So this is approximately. 1.77. How about the fourth root of 86,040? Index first, find our general root right above the caret key, and then we fill in the value inside the radical. The value inside the radical is called the radicand. So the radicand is 86,040. And this is about 17.1, and that 2 will raise up to a 3, because the digit after it is a 6. That seems like a really tiny result. If you had 17.6, oops, sorry, 17.13, 17.13, and you multiplied it by 17, Point one three, and you did that again times 17.13 and one more time times 17.13 remember we were raising something to the fourth power and then we pressed enter there we go 86,000 whoops I mistyped up there didn't I point one six in there at any rate that's what I meant multiply it by itself four times and we should be right back up there where we belong. So you can sort of double check those if it looks a little strange to you. Just be careful when you're uh, typing, right? I mistyped in there. Okay, how about the 12th root, or sorry, seventh root of 12 to the seventh power? Do we really need the calculator for this one? Well, no, because the seventh root is gonna undo the seventh power and this answer should be 12. Let's see what happens on the calculator. So the seven is the index. We need the general root, so we say second and the caret key. Inside, we would like 12 raised to the, so you can still put an exponent inside of a square root, that's not a problem, seventh power. And what do we get? Exactly the 12 that we expected. All right, so down here at the end, a last couple for you. Remember, the job of a root is to undo what the exponents did. You should be able to do all of these really quickly and without your calculator. Pause the recording, see what you can do. All right, the square root of 37 squared. Square roots undo squaring, the answer should be 37. The fourth root of 220 to the fourth power fourth roots undo fourth powers. The answer should be 220. 
the eighth root of 103 to the eighth power. Eighth roots undo eighth powers. So the answer is 103. And last but not least, we have the square root of six centimeters, whole thing squared. So inside of this, this is six centimeters times six centimeters. Square roots undo squaring, and our answer is six centimeters. All right, good luck with your homework. We'll be talking to you later. Take care. Have a great day.